Hello everyone, today I wanna to talk about five great aquarium plants. Maybe they're the top five. The top five changes over time depending on quality we can get from farms, what I'm enjoying and things like that. And it's been a while since I've done a video like this. I work with plants every day. I'm a master aquatic horticulturist. I love plants and I so rarely talk about why I like them and things like that. So we're gonna take a little trip on the website today and just point out some of my current favorites. Now, you might be saying, but Corey, I watched a video in the past that said you love this plant. I pretty much love all plants. You know, different talking points and, and current uh, vendors that supply us and, oh, it's really good right now, I would buy it. And we're gonna get into that. So I'm gonna swap over to the uh, website here. All right, so we're on our website, aquariumcoop.com. If you didn't know that, we ship everywhere in the United States. If you're out of the United States, unfortunately we can't ship you plants, but we're gonna go into the live plant section. Our first plant today happens to be towards the top, Dwarf Sagittaria. Now I'm gonna click in on this plant so you can get a better picture here. What you're seeing right now is an immersed grown plant. What does that mean? That means it's grown up out of the water at a farm. These round leaves, that's what's happened there. The skinnier leaves in the center are actually what are underwater grown. And this is a plant that would be in our care and it starts converting. Over time, you're gonna see it maybe start looking like this, where it's like just got all these tiny little leaves now, like what's going on? And then it'll start growing out longer and longer. If you see it in, you know, like in one of my aquariums, it's gonna grow relatively tall because I run low light. If you run high light, it'll stay much shorter. It's a carpeting plant, fairly easy to grow. One of my tips to actually get it to grow well is put a root tab in the rock wool in the pot. So that's that spongy stuff that's in this potted plant. I put the, the root tab in right next to it and I let it bounce out from the pot and start running around the aquarium. And then eventually I can remove that pot if I want or I put it behind a rock or a piece of wood and it just fills in and looks really good long term. So that's one of my absolute favorites. It's, it's a cheap plant at $7. Uh, if you only ever bought one, it could fill in any aquarium, even this 800 gallon. In fact, I'm strongly considering putting some in. And one of the reasons, like one of my favorite plants used to be Vallisneria. Vallisneria is an amazing plant. It grows four to six feet tall. This aquarium is almost four feet tall. So that is a great thing. Whereas Dwarf Sag, it mostly gets to about up to 18 inches. So if I wanted something kind of in the middle of this tank, it works out great. The average home aquarium, 125, 75s, 55s, 20 gallons, this is gonna be more of a background plant unless you're running very high light. So Dwarf Sag, one of my favorites. Next I have the Dwarf Aquarium Lily Bulb. I absolutely love these. This is a plant that you look like an aquatic wizard when you get one growing and they grow really fast. They take a little bit to set in, like, okay, it's not doing anything. And oh my gosh, in a week it brought on 10 leaves. And so we sell it in uh, peat, so it ships easily, even if you're in a really hot or really cold climate, you're just getting the bulb, and the bulb has a bunch of nutrients, and you put it on the gravel, and eventually it's gonna grow its leaves. And if it doesn't grow after a week or so, you kind of flip it over and go, oh, I put it in upside down. There's no real way to know. And then it'll start growing, and when it does, you get all this nice color with all these kind of uh, rusty red leaves. They can get really red, and they'll go you know, low, medium and then put big lily pads at the top of your water and it really just looks great in an aquarium. Everyone that sees it will be like, wow, you're so good. That's a real plant. Wow. You know, and then they'll talk about how they used to have a lily in their pond and all of that and and but it really is a nice thing. And at four dollars, it's you don't even really have to have fertilizer or anything. I mean if you have some poopy gravel from your fish and it's got enough to nutrients to get started. Usually you do well long term. If you have a massive, massive plant, yeah, it's gonna want some fertilizer down the road, but you'll get a lot of use out of it. It's great if you have low light. Uh, we recommend it for like, oh, is I got a bed of tank off in the corner. I've got a kid that has a tank. It'll grow anywhere for anyone pretty much, as long as it resembles something of an aquarium. So I really love that plant. Uh, the next one I wanna talk about today is Cryptocorn Wendedi. Now specifically red variants and stuff like that, they come in green, they come in red, they come in pink, they come in a lot of variants, and we sell a lot of variants. This one in particular, we call it Cryptocorn Wendedi. We pretty much only send out ready bronzishness. And what I mean by that is, as it grows in, depending on how you're growing it is what it'll look like. So this is what we get it in as. It'll come in, this is grown up out of water again. As it converts, it's gonna melt back. You might've heard of something called Crip Melt. And when then it's gonna start coming back and it's gonna fill in more like this. You can see here, there's like, okay, it's like a rust color. That one's getting redder. This was in a low light aquarium with some root tabs. 
and it was more bronzy. If I put higher light on it and a lot more root tabs and maybe dose a little bit of easy iron, then we'll get more reds out of this like you may have seen in some other aquariums like maybe with Murphy or something like that on our Murphy cam. Great plant, easy. I like that you can just use root tabs and if, again, if you have like really well-established gravel, you had a tank for three years, fish have been pooping in it and it's really seeded, uh, you can basically just plant it in there and it will grow, which is great and any light will really grow it. It might not get a super dark red for you, but any light will keep it alive. All right, next I want to talk about Pogo Stemmen Stellatus Octopus. That's a crazy name. It's a stem plant. It grows tall. It grows wispy. It's got different shaped leaves. It grows in pretty bushy, but it can, the octopus is like, it's got tentacles that spread out. Now when you plant it, each stem, plant it so it's spaced out a little bit. This one does want liquid fertilizers like our Easy Green or something like that. Relatively fast growing, can handle low light, uh, but the more light you give it, the faster it grows. A lot of people will say like, this is a weed, right? And some people will say like, I can't get it to grow. Well, it's, it's somewhere in between there for people depending on what you're doing. And if you ever wanna know like, are these plants gonna grow in my aquarium? You can click on the reviews and you can read what other people are have what experience they're having so and the good thing is you can see the pictures like oh this person's growing it with uh with goldfish and i can see about how much light they've got going on and we can scroll down we go well what's this person got oh it's still in the pot look it's got that wispy look it's growing tall okay i maybe i got something like that right and you look at it, this is from the top of the aquarium they got some duckweed in there and so really what i what i really like about this is you can get quite a bit of uh, info by looking into the reviews that people are giving. And these are, you know, relevant reviews. This is, you know, this is today, actually. Next up, we have Anubius Nangi. Now, that's a, a newer Anubius. What does that mean? That means, you know, it's newer to the hobby over the last maybe five, six years, which if you've only been in the hobby for a year, you're like, hey, that's that doesn't seem new at all. What if you've been doing it for 10, 20, 30 years? That is new, right? What I like about this Anubius is that it seems to be easier than other Anubias, which you might be saying, but Anubias are already easy. Yes, Anubias are easy, but it seems to grow big, have lesser requirements for fertilizer, and just in general ships really well. I, I guess that's what I, I notice about it is so rarely do we ever have a problem where someone's going, hey, it's not doing so hot. Whereas maybe like Anubias Santa Petite, it's fragile, a little more fragile. This one seems to be a real die-hard, good plant. Um, you want to plant it by attaching it to wood or rock. You eventually take it out of that rock wool, or you could put it into um, like a decoration or something like that. It's just a nice plant, great low-light plant, great low-fertilizer plant. A nice thick leaves grows really slow. So if you had a smaller aquarium and you don't want it to be overgrown by some of these other plants, this is a great choice. Now. There's plenty of plants to buy from our website and you can pick what you like and there's the stock is always updated. So, you know, you can see some of these plants are out of stock. Right now I happen to be filming on a Thursday. We'll, we know we're getting a, another plant shipment on Friday. We'll get another one on Saturday. We'll get another one on Tuesday. We always kind of have plants rolling in and also selling. We sell an incredible amount. And so things usually aren't gone for too long except for something like a banana plant, right? A banana plant has been out of stock for like eight or nine months. It's an environmental problem. They're not growing and not being harvested. But in general, know that we do everything we can to keep them in stock and healthy and ready to sell. And sometimes we'll just, we can't get healthy ones and that's where we won't sell them. Know that what we are shipping out is healthy. If it arrives to you and isn't healthy, sometimes it got extra beat up in transit. Maybe it sat on the back of a truck too long. Maybe it sat on an airport too long and we'll take care of you. Don't worry about that. We wanna see you have success with these plants. And you can always just click in on a random plant and just see what other people's experiences are. That's one of my favorite things to do when I'm shopping is, you know, 150 reviews on this Amazon sword. You can just, you can see real life examples of what people are getting, you know, and you see here, they're keeping it with shrimp and you can just keep looking at it. And, and please know that we don't whitewash our reviews. If you look, you're going to see, like, okay, here's someone, let's see, you know, this plant's not doing well. Upon receiving the plant, it looked healthy with no issues. So, you know, we shipped it, sounds pretty good. I planted it, applied fertilizer tabs under the substrate and weekly fertilizer, all purchased through here. Four to five days later, my swords have browned and started to get crisp around the edges. Not sure what I did wrong, but it's a little disappointing to see this plant start to die off when I thought I did everything recommended. 
I have also the Stingray lamp, which I keep on for eight hours with uh, four hours in the day and four hours at nighttime. So there's probably something else going on there. Could be water parameters, could be something we don't know. And for all I know, a lot of times if they reached out to us, we would have taken care of you through email, but there's not really a good way to go and update reviews and stuff like that. And so if you poke around, for sure you're going to find bad reviews because we don't hide them. That's very important to us. Like I would, you know, I know, oh, we talked about Anubius Nana Petite. I bet we could find, there's 252 reviews, probably find some negative reviews here if it loads. There we go. And so you can see here we've got, you know, like eight one star, four uh, two star, two three stars, and then, you know, like 229 or five stars. But you can see, you know, you can obviously chime in and see what people are doing with it. And then you can scroll down and you can get a pulse on, okay, it did fine in the United States or in Washington, did fine in Nevada, did fine in Pennsylvania. And then you're like, oh, this one to Sacramento didn't do well. I bought two pots on June 5th. And after a few days, I noticed some of their leaves were falling off on their own. It was closer inspection. Uh, I noticed that most of the rhizome was soft and mushy. So that would lead me to believe they actually have uh, a nubious rhizome rot, which no one knows the cure for, and when that happens, we actually just ship out new plants or refund someone's money. From our experience, it's not contagious, doesn't spread to other Anubias. You might have a different experience, but we tend to keep a few thousand Anubias on hand at any one point, and we would notice like, oh gosh, it went through like wildfire. And even if we sit on, let's say we bring in 500 Anubias Santa Petite and we sit on them for three months, you'll notice like, yep, 17 of them had Anubias rot, no way to cure it, didn't spread, and then you ship them out and the next shipment comes in and nope, 22 of them had it. And so we have to make a decision, sell it or don't sell it. And we choose to sell it and then just make good on anything that doesn't do well. And, uh, you know, like right here, and I'm not, I'm not calling anyone out by any means. So I don't want this to be like, hey, that was my review. Um, but we can see here, there might be, that looks like it might be quite a bit of super glue or silicone. And maybe that had some impact. Maybe it didn't. It could have come in bad. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I always hate when, People put the blame on, they must have done something wrong because there's it's a two-part equation. We ship it, you buy it, and you put it in your tank. We both got to be a part of this to be successful. So I hope you can look at our uh, our selection, our plants, and pick up some of those easy ones that I talked about. Or not, well, they are easy, but some of those ones that I like and make educated decision and hopefully will be your you know preferred plant vendor for years to come because we try really hard. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out our blog. We have tons of useful info all the time. We'll see you in the next video.